good afternoon students today we will study about the surgery in the surgery we will study about the ophthalmology and in the ophthalmology we will continue the diseases of the uvl tract diseases of the uvl tract <coughs> contain the tumor of the uvl tract that is tumor of the choroid ciliary body and the iris uvl tract is made up of three components that is choroid ciliary body and iris so tumors of the uvl tract are of three types in that classification first one is a tumors of the choroid a that is benign in that first is a neighbor hemangioma melanocytoma and choroidal osteoma and in the malignant there is a melanoma so these are the tumors of core then second classification is the tumor of the ciliary body that is benign and malignant in the benign there is a hyperplasia benign cyst and the medullo epithelioma and in the malignant there is a melanoma so these are the types of the tumors of the ciliary body in benign and malignant tumor then third classification is the tumors of the iris in that first one is the benign and malignant in the benign there is again never benign cyst nevo xantho endothelioma and in the malignant there is the melanoma so this is a classification of the tumors of the uvl tract then in that first one is the tumor of the choroid in that nevus so nevus is a commonly occurring asymptomatic lesion usually diagnosed on routine fundus examination it typically present as a flat and dark gray lesion with a feather margin and usually associated with the overlying colored body once diagnosed it should be followed regularly since it may undergo malignant change which is evidenced by first that is increasing pigmentation or the height of the nevus then second is the appearance of orange patches of lipofuscin over the surface and third that is appearance of serous detachment in the area of the nevus then second benign tumor is that choroidal hemangioma it occur in two forms first one that is localized choroidal hemangioma is present as a raised dome shaped salmon pink swelling usually situated at posterior pole of the eye so it is a raised dome shaped salmon pink swelling situated at the posterior pole of the eye and overlying retina may show the serous detachment cystoid degeneration and pigment epithelium what so pleural angiography is usually diagnostic in the case of localized choroidal hemangioma in that second is a diffuse choroidal hemangioma is seen in association with sturge weber syndrome and causes a diffuse deep red discoloration of the fundus so diffuse choroidal hemangioma it is associated with sturge weber syndrome and causes a diffuse red discoloration of the fundus then in that there is a melanocytoma <coughs> melanocytoma it is a rare tumor which present as a jet black region around the optic disc then choroidal osteoma choroidal osteoma it is a very rare benign tumor which present as elevated 
yellowish orange lesion in the posterior pole and it typically affects the young woman then next is a malignant melanoma of the colon it is a most common primarily intraocular tumor of adult and usually seen between 40 to 70 years of the age it is rare in black and comparatively more common in white so it arises from the neural crest derived a pigment cell of the uvea as a solitary tumor and it is usually uvea so the malignant melanoma of the choroid is a most common primary intraocular tumor present in a adult in between 40 to 70 years and it is rare in black but comparatively more common in white so it is mostly seen in the forest cut and it arises from the neural crest derived pigment cell of the uvea as a solitary tumor and usually uvea next is pathology so the cross pathology shows that the tumor may arise from pre existing never or de novo from the mature melanocyte present in the stroma and it may occur in two forms in that first one is a circumscribed that is pedunculated tumor and diffuse that is flat malignant melanoma so <clears throat> this is a cross pathology and in the histopathologically that is microscopically uveal melanoma are following four types that is first one is a spindle cell melanoma second is epitheloid cell melanoma third that is mixed cell melanoma fourth is a necrotic melanoma the clinical picture of is is for the purpose of description only the clinical picture can be divided into four stages first one that is the quiescent stage quiescent stage in this stage that is during this stage the symptoms depend upon the location and the size of the tumor so it depend upon the location where it is located and the size that is the size of the tumor and small tumor located in the periphery may not produce any symptoms so if there is a small tumor present in the periphery then it may not produce any symptom but tumor arising from the posterior pole present with early visual loss but in case where the tumor is present in the posterior pole then it gives rise to a visual loss early visual loss and a large tumor associated with the exudative retinal detachment may produce a marked loss of vision so when a large tumor is associated with retinal detachment which is exudative then it produces a marked loss of vision so this is all about the quiescent stage that is depend on the location and the size of the tumor then the signs are fundus examination during this stage may reveal the following in that first one that is a small tumor limited to the choroid appear as an elevated pigmented oval mass so this is a diagram of the fundus photograph showing a choroidal melanoma as red pigmented subretinal mass so there is a red pigmented subretinal mass which is seen in the choroidal melanoma in the fundus photograph so 
in the sign a small tumor limited to the choroid appear as an elevated pigmented oval then second is a glucomatous glucomatous stage is developed when tumor is left untreated during the crescent stage so when in the crescent stage tumor is left untreated means tumor is not treated then it develop a glucomatous stage glucoma may develop due to the obstruction to the venous outflow by the pressure on the vertex vortex wall so in that case glaucoma develop due to the obstruction to the venous outflow by the pressure on the vortex wall blockage of the angle of the anterior chamber by the forward displacement of the lens iris diaphragm due to the increasing growth of the tumor so there is a obstruction of the venous outflow it is due to the pressure by vortex strain and blockage of the angle of anterior chamber by the forward displacement of the lens so there is a forward displacement of the lens and iris diaphragm due to the increasing growth of the tumor which lead to the glaucoma in the glaucomatous stage then the symptoms are the patient complain a severe pain redness and watering in an already blind eye so there are the blind eye with the severe pain redness and lack of vision so this is a diagram of the malignant melanoma of the choroid causing This is a diagram of a malignant melanoma of the choroid causing exudative retinal detachment in that A that is diagrammatic depiction in cut section. So this is a malignant melanoma of the choroid and this is a fundus photograph in that we can see how the spread of the malignant melanoma of the choroid. Then, the signs shows that conjunctiva is chemos and congested cornea may show edema so there is a chemosis and congestion of conjunctiva and cornea shows a edema anterior chamber is usually shallow pupil fixed dilated lens is usually opaque and obstructing the back view then there is a intraocular pressure is raised and usually eye with the stony heart. Sometimes the features of aridocyclitis may be seen due to the tumor induced movement. So in science shows there is a chemosis and congestion, congestion of conjunctiva with the edema of cornea and shallow anterior chamber with the fixed and dilated pupil and opaque lens with the intraocular pressure leads to a stony hard eye and there is maybe some features like aridocyclitis due to the tumor induced urine then third that is stage of the extraocular extension Due to the progressive growth of the tumor may burst to the sclera, usually at the limbus. The extraocular spread may occur even early along the perivascular spaces of the vortex veins or ciliary vessels. 
and it is followed by the rapid fungation and the involvement of extraocular tissue resulting in birth proptosis so this is a diagram of the extensive malignant melanoma of the choroid involving the organ so in the stage of the extraocular extension due to the progressive growth of the tumor there is a progressive growth of the tumor which lead to the tumor burst through the sclera usually at limbus so tumor is burst through the sclera at limbus and the extraocular spread may occur even early along the perivascular spaces of the vortex vein or ciliary vessel and it is followed by rapid formation and involvement of extraocular tissues resulting in marked proptosis then fourth that is stage of the distant metastasis lymphatic spread is usually not known but the blood borne metastasis usually occur in the liver and is the commonest cause of the death so in the stage of the distant metastasis there is a lymphatic spread is not but blood borne metastasis is usually occur in liver and which leads to death investigation in that first one is the indirect ophthalmoscopic examination trans elimination test ultrasonography fluorescence in angiography radioactive gases and cyst therapy device so the treatment of the tumor of the choroid contains first one is a conservative treatment it is to salvage the eyeball should be tied unless the tumor is very large so when the tumor is very large then to save the eyeball the conservative treatment is useful in that method use are first one is a bracket therapy second that is external beam radiotherapy third that is transpupillary thermotherapy ttd Third, fourth, that is transpleural local resection. Fifth, that is stereostatic radio surgery. Then, second is the end nucleation. End nucleation, it is indicated for very larger tumor in which conservative method to salvage the eyeball are not effective. So, when conservative treatment is not enough. to treat a larger tumor then in nucleation is used third that is excentration or debulking b chemotherapy and radiotherapy is required in the stage of the extraocular spread fourth that is palliative treatment with the chemotherapy and immunotherapy may be of some use in prolonging life of the patient with the distant metastasis so chemotherapy and radiotherapy is required in the stage of extraocular spread it is called as the ex entration or debulking and with the chemotherapy and immunotherapy may be some of the use in prolonging life of the patient with distant metastasis is useful in a palliative treatment then second is classification of the tumor of the uveal tract that is tumors of the ciliary body so tumor of the ciliary body contain hyperplasia and benign cyst these are the insignificant lesion of the ciliary body so the hyperplasia and benign cyst are insignificant so there is no much significant lesion of the ciliary body then medulloepithelioma that is dictyoma 
medullary epithelioma it is a rare congenital tumor which is arising from the non tegmental epithelium of the ciliary body and it present in the first decade of the life hello ha uh, lecture ge de mi ha char vasta bolte okay teen te char lecture hai maza karte epithelioma is rare congenital tumor arising from the non pigmented epithelium of the ciliary body and is present in the first decade of the life so it is congenital tumor present in the first decade of the life then malignant melanoma malignant melanoma in the ciliary body it is usually diagnosed very late and due to its hidden location its location is hidden so it is usually diagnosed very late and it may extend anteriorly posteriorly or grow circumferentially so malignant melanoma extend anteriorly posteriorly or peripherally its location is hidden so it is usually diagnosed very late this is about malignant melanoma then the clinical features of tumor of the ciliary body in that first one is the earliest features of a localized melanoma include slight hypotony uncountable defective region and localized that is sentinel dilated epicellular vein in the quadrant containing tumor so a rare feature is <coughs> there is a slight hypotony and unaccountable defective region and localized sentinel dilated epicellular vein in the quadrant containing tumor so in that there is a tumor is actually in the, that quadrant which contain a dilated epithelial vein but there is a no much defective region in the earlier stage and anterior spreading tumor so when tumor is spread then the clinical features are as follows that is may cause pressure on the nails and resulting in anterior displacement subluxation and the cataract formation so as the tumor arises and spread anteriorly which leads to anterior displacement subluxation and cataract formation second that it may involve the iris and is visible image so it may involve angle of the anterior chamber resulting <coughs> resulting in secondary glaucoma third that it may extend through sclera along the vessels presenting as an iti bulbar mark third that is posterior spreading tumor it may involve choroid and present a exudative retinal disease so the posterior spreading tumor in what the covid and present as a exudative retinal tumor fourth that is the tumor may ex- 
Sin, Circumference Theory, Involving the Whole of the Ciliary Cord. So, fourth one is that Human Extent Circumference Theory. And initially involving the ciliary cord. Pathological features are similar to that of choroid and melanoma. They are frequent in that first one is amniopiation, that it is required for large ciliary body tumor extending anteriorly, posteriorly, and circumferentially. And local resection, that is cyclectomy or iridocyclectomy, may be enough. And if fortunately tumor is detected in the early so if the tumor is detected in early stage that is in iridocyclectomy or cyclectomy then local resection is used then third classification that is the tumor of the eye Tumor of the iris consists of benign and the malignant tumor. In that benign, first one is the nevus. So, nevus, it is the most common region of the iris. It presents as a flat, pigmented, circumscribed region of variable size. And rarely, malignant change may occur in it. So, it should be observed. So, never is the most common region of the eye and is present as a flat, pigmented, circumcised region of variable size. And rarely, malignant change may occur in it. So, it should be observed. Then, neoxantho endothelium. Neoxantho endothelium it is a rare fleshy vascular region seen in babies. It may cause recurrent hypemia and it is treated with the X-ray or CT. So, neoxantho endothelioma is rare fleshy vascular region seen in babies and it is caused a recurrent hypemia and treated with X-ray or CT. Then malignant melanoma. Malignant melanoma, it is present as a single or multiple rapidly growing vascular nodule and it will spread in the angle producing a secondary glaucoma. It may penetrate through limbers and present as Epibulbar mass. Pathological features are similar to that of melanoma of the cord. So, the malignant melanoma present as a single multiple spread rapidly growing vascular node and spread in the angle producing the secondary glaucoma. So, it penetrates through limbers and presents as the epibulbar mass. And pathological features are similar to that of melanoma of the cord. Then the treatment. Wide iridectomy, it is performed for a tumor limited to the iris. Second, that is iridocyclectomy, it is required for a tumor involving iris and ciliary body. Then third, that is end nucleation, it should be performed when Iris melanoma is associated with the secondary glaucoma. So, the treatment shows that first one, wide iridectomy performed for tumor limited to the iris. And second, that is iridocyclectomy required for the tumor involving iris and ciliary cord. And N-nucleation is performed when iris melanoma is with secondary so, this is all about the tumors of the uveal tract, that is tumors of the choroid, ciliary body and then 
Next topic is the homeopathic therapeutics for the diseases of the UVS. So the homeopathic therapeutic for the diseases of the UVS that contains first one that is choroid. Choroiditis is the inflammation of the choroid. In that first one is atrophic. For this, Nuxvamica, Phosphorus and Prilog is useful. When inflammation of the choroid, that is choroiditis, <coughs> is disseminated and simple, then Arsenic Alpha, Belladonna, Bryonia, Cideron, Cideron, Gelsemion, Epicac, Kali Iodine, Mercurius, Merc Iodum Rubrum, Naphthalin, Phosphorus, Lunus, Santon, <coughs> Sap, Tellurium, and Thuja are used. When <coughs> choroiditis is superative, that is, superative inflammation of the choroid, then in that case, Hipparcel and Rustop can be used. And when there is a choroiditis is a superative with the iris involvement, then Kali iron, Provincels and Silicia is useful. Choroiditis when superative with the retinal involvement, that is syphilitic. In that case, Aurum met Kali iod, Kali mood, Merc iodum rubrum is useful. When there is a retinal involvement that is syphilitic with the superative choroiditis. Then second is the arido choroiditis. In that there is a inflammation of arido choroid, iris and choroid. In that case caliayos, prunes poop and silicia is useful. And in aridocyclitis, traumatic with the infection and sequinae, then there is a natrum salic is helpful. When iris is prolapsed, then antim and physostigma may be used. In the iritis, when there is an inflammation of the iris, Remedies are generally used are Aconite Nepalus, Arsenic Album, Belladonna, Cedron, Synapis, Clematis, DUB, Euphrasia, Ferrofor, Gelsemium, Grandulus, Hipparcel, Iodum, Kali Bichromium, Kali Io, Mercurius Cor, Mercurius Sulfuris, Pulsatilla, Rust Tox, Spigelia, Symphytum, Tellurium, Terebenthina, and Thuja. So these are the many remedies useful in the cases of arthritis. When there is a plastic arthritis, there is Econidus, Bryonia, Synabus, Hipparsal, Mercurius for Rustop and Thuja may be used. And when iritis is rheumatic in origin, then Arnica, Arnica Montana, Bryony Alba, Clematis, Colchicum, Euphrasia, Formica, Kali Bichromium, Kali Ledum, Mercurius for Rustop, Spigelia, Terebenthina, and Thuja is useful. And when iritis is a serous, then Epis mellifica, Arsenic Album, Bryonia, Cedron, Gelsemium, Mercurius, Cor, Mercurius, Spigelia can be helpful. And when iritis is in syphilitic origin, then Asafoidida, Aurum Met, 
പിന്നെ ക്ലിമാറ്റിസ് അയോഡം കലി ബൈക്രോമിയം കലി അയോ മെർക്യൂറിയസ് കോ മെർക്യൂറിയസ് ടൈനേറ്റ് മെർക്യൂറിയസ് അയോഡം ലേബം നൈട്രിക് ആസിഡ് സൾഫോർ ഫ്രൂജ മേ ബി ഐറൈറ്റിസ് ഇസ് ഡ്യൂ ടു ദ ട്രോമ ഡേ എക്വലൈറ്റ് നേപ്പല് അർണിക മോണ്ടാന ബെലഡോന മെമലി ലീഡം പാൽ and the stock can be found and then irritation in due to the tuberculosis origin then arsenic album kali bichromium sulfur sympyta tuberculin is used and when there is a pan of thermites then the parcel and the stock can be used and for the ciliary muscles so when there is a accommodation is disturb of ciliary muscle then epicac and ruta can be used and when 